praised be Jesus. I have come to tell the world that God is truth. He exists. True happiness and the fullness of life are in Him. I have come here as the Queen of Peace to tell the world that peace is necessary for the salvation of the world. In God, one finds true joy from which true peace is derived. Thank you for having responded to my call. Francisco Paco Rodriguez was a 25-year-old boxer, won the Gold Glove Championship five times, and he was about to fight for the biggest fight of his life, the featherweight championship of the world in Chicago. Paco had a one-year-old daughter, his wife, and his family, and he told his family before he went to that fight, I want so much to be a hero for my family. And he went to that fight, and he fought 10 rounds as gallantly as anybody could fight. But in the 10th round, the fight was called off because Paco was so beaten up that the referee had to stop the fight. Paco Francisco Rodriguez went to his corner, told his trainer, I feel very tired. And right there in his corner, he collapsed on the canvas and three hours later in the hospital, declared dead. His wife was notified. His wife and young child, one year old, came to the hospital. They couldn't believe what had just taken place. Paco told them before he left to that hospital before he went to the fight I just want to be a hero for my family a donor organization contacted the hospital immediately five people were waiting for organs from a person of that age group The family, realizing what Paco said before he went to that fight, realized that after convening with all of the family, and they realized they would no longer have Francisco, that maybe this is what Paco was meant for. Maybe this was his way to be a hero. Five recipients received organs from Paco Francisco. After one year, the wife wanted to meet those recipients. She wanted to know who those recipients were that had her husband's organs. All of those recipients met in Chicago. They all agreed through correspondence. You can't talk to the recipients directly. The mother of one of the recipients flew into Chicago with her. She took Paco's mother and hugged her and whispered in her ear, only a mother could understand this and thank you for the gift that you gave to us in Paco. And then it moves to the cemetery and all the recipients are looking right there at Paco's grave at his site, the whole family and all of the recipients. And one of the girls the screen gets really big and focused directly on her face and she says, it is so sad to know that someone had to die for me to have life. As I watched that little film, that little documentary, I was hit right between the eyes. I said, that's it. That is it. Someone had to die for me to have life. These messages from Our Lady provide a distinct roadmap, a tremendous gift from the Father Himself for our new spiritual life and salvation. Do you recognize the magnitude? And the significance of this, if you do recognize this gift from the Father, are you as grateful 
as those recipients of those organs? If we say we are grateful, how are we showing this in our daily lives? If we say we have received new spiritual life, what commitment are we willing to make to develop and sustain that life? If you're not feeling as grateful as these recipients, as those organ recipients expressed, they couldn't express it deep enough. For this gift that is given to us from the Father, then what or who is the cause of that? Here's a quote from St. Therese, my favorite saint. We only have short moments of this life to work for God's glory. The devil knows this, and that is why he tries to make us waste time in useless things. From one mother to another, nobody could understand it but yourself. I thank you for the gift you've given to us. If they all but join together 
we were called here to give thanks to Mary for the gift that she has given to us. When we take time to comprehend the incredible gift she gave to us for our redemption and salvation, not for just this time, but for eternity, many times it brings me to tears. There is much we cannot fully comprehend regarding the incredible mystery in our faith. But many or most of us know she is real. Don't you think there were times that Mary didn't comprehend at all? But she cooperated. She trusted completely and allowed God to have his way. She is our model of trust. She is our model of surrender, Jesus' first disciple. And she's still playing the same role in perfect cooperation with her heavenly Father in her work throughout the universe. To those who choose to believe, I believe your faith will be enhanced incredibly and strengthened as a result. I was led to these words just a couple of years ago from Pope Urban VIII nearly four centuries ago, and he gave these words of wisdom regarding heavenly apparitions. In cases like this, It is better to believe than not to believe. For if you believe and it is proven true, you will be happy you have believed because your holy mother asked it. If you believe and it should be proven false, you will receive all blessings if it had been true because you believed it to be true. When I heard that I read these words for the first time, there was this element of a little bit of doubt that completely vanished. Because if I want to believe, I have that right to believe. No matter who tells me what, if I believe, that's between me and my maker. And if I have a conviction, then I'm going to live that way. Because if by chance it happens to prove to be false, I happen to be a total believer. I don't know if that's helped anybody to hear that. Dear children, I am inviting you to a complete surrender to God. Pray, little children, that Satan may not carry you about like the branches in the wind. Be strong in God. I desire that through you the whole world may get to know the God of joy. By your life, bear witness to God's joy. Do not be anxious nor worried. God himself will help you and show you the way. I desire that you love all men with my love. Only in that way can love reign over the world. Little children, you are mine. I love you and want you to surrender to me so that I can lead you to God. Never cease praying so that Satan cannot take advantage of you. Pray for the knowledge that you are mine. I am blessing you with the blessings of joy. Thank you for having responded to my call. This God, the creator of this universe, who brought the world and mankind into existence, just wanted to be loved by his creation. But his creation turned against him in disobedience and wanted to go their own way, just like today. The separation called by original sin exists to this day and throughout the Old Testament. We mentioned before there are stories of man turning from God throughout the entire Old Testament. Man following his own lustful passions and his quest for power is as old as civilization. Everything Father Neil spoke about was all true. Everything that came out of his mouth was true. We see it all around us. Our own country now has become the victim of man's greed and lust 
to the point of total bankruptcy. Are we at this point because of our own spiritual bankruptcy? I believe it. I believe that. Everywhere we turn, there is a desire to take God out of the picture. Pride, greed, and arrogance are quickly replacing faith, hope, and charity. The battle between good and evil seems to be building and building. Fear seems to be coming over the human heart like waves hitting on a beach. We are watching the results of tsunamis, tornadoes, earthquakes, violence of all kinds via technology in real time now. And it is certain there will be more and more events to shake the very foundations of this world. Along with heresy and expect calamity, for Jesus said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. In the words of blessed John Paul II, be not afraid. God does not want us to be afraid. Our Lady does not want us to be afraid. Our Lady said on Sunday, August 30th, 1981, be without fear, for I am close to you everywhere and at all times. We don't have to go very far to find comfort in this crazy world. We just have to pick up the scriptures. Scriptures bring me comfort. They bring me confidence. They bring me courage. They bring me strength. Read it. Study it. Absorb it. That's what Our Lady's asking. It's one of her main messages. Absorb it and live it. Read and live the messages of Our Lady that she has been given for 30 years. On, her, on Thursday, uh, April 19th, 1984, this is one of the most special messages I recall in all of my readings. Praised be Jesus. I'm going to reveal a spiritual secret to you. If you want to be stronger than evil, make yourself a plan of personal prayer. Take a certain time in the morning, read a text from the Holy Scripture, anchor the divine word in your heart, and strive to live it during the day, particularly during the moments of trials. In this way, you will be stronger than evil. My son's gift and mine at this moment is this. You will be comforted in your trials. They will be easier for you because we will be close to you. If you listen to us, we will show you how to overcome them. You must strive to pray. Prayer is the only road that leads to peace. If you pray and fast, you will obtain everything that you ask for. I invite you especially these days, open your hearts to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit acts now through you. Open your hearts and offer your life to Jesus so that he will act in your hearts and strengthen you in the faith. Thank you for having responded to my call. Dear children, today I invite you to take with seriousness and put into practice the messages I am giving you. You know, little children, that I am with you and that I desire to lead you along the same path to heaven, which is beautiful for those who discover it in prayer. Therefore, little children, do not forget that these messages which I am giving you have to be put into your everyday life in order that you might be able to say, There, I have taken the messages and I am trying to live them. Dear children, I am protecting you before the Heavenly Father by my own prayers. Thank you for having responded to my call. I would like to send out a challenge to you to become a red-letter Catholic. You know what that is? My favorite Bible is a Bible that has all of Jesus' words in red. And I really enjoy focusing right in on Jesus' words. So, I think Our Lady is encouraging all of us. Doesn't have to be a red letter Bible, but 
I contend that they're, they're easy to find as words. Take time to listen to Our Lady's messages. Those who have gotten the CD, there's uh, an interesting thing listening as opposed to reading that I think you'll experience. And we probably come to the realization that everything she's saying comes for the Father. And that's a huge realization. How many of us are familiar with the Bible verse of John 3.16? Would you raise your hand? Anybody? You know what that is? I find this to be just one of the most basic scripture passages we can be illuminated to and comprehend. This is the basis of our faith. For God so loved the world... He sent his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Everything Our Lady points to is John 3.16. We see it at baseball games. We see it at football games. I remember the first time I, I saw this when I was a kid, I thought it was a sports st statistic. Well, John must have just hit his third home run on the... And then I started realizing this was from Scripture. Now, we don't have to go around, you know, with the placard, but I think it is important we do comprehend this, this passage. Alexis said, someone had to die for me to have life. When it comes to our faith, who is really our hero? Jesus Christ. He died to give us the ultimate gift, the gift of eternal life, the promise of eternal life. About the fact that he gave us his true body and his true blood, just like Father Neil said, what goes on inside of you during Holy Mass when you receive that wafer and that wine, the real presence, new life, In a recent survey called Americans Don't Know Much About Religion, 45% of Roman Catholics who participated did not know that according to church teaching, the bread and wine used in Holy Communion is not just a symbol. 45%. In the words of Hosea the prophet, my people perish for lack of understanding. Wouldn't you say to believe in him means you have faith in what he has conveyed in his teachings? Would you agree that to have faith in someone is to trust that what he is telling you is the truth? Now, if you could become convinced, certain that his words mean the difference of life or death, spiritual life or spiritual death, wouldn't you want to know everything, absolutely everything he has to say? You would if that was your money manager. You'd want to know every little thing he has to say. It seems harder and harder to find truth or authenticity today. Here is a truth that is an incredible truth. Jesus said, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Here's another truth. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Or how about this truth? I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. John 6:51. And this truth, my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. I have my scriptures, I have this, 
and I have her. How can we not be incredibly grateful that we are Catholic? We have a Eucharist that Jesus says is my true body and my true blood. And we have Mary, the mother of Jesus, who seems to be a stumbling block in the Christian faith, who is everywhere in the world. She brought him here the first time. Wouldn't you think she's going to be the instrument to bring him here the second time? Many of the saints have already said that. Our hero rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again. And what is he going to find when he returns? Dear children, today I am inviting you to complete surrender to God. Dear children, you are not conscious of how God loves you with such a great love because he permits me to be with you so I can instruct you and help you to find the way of peace. This way, however, you cannot discover if you do not pray. Therefore, dear children, forsake everything and consecrate your time to God, and then God will bestow gifts upon you and bless you. Little children, do not forget that your life is fleeting like a spring flower, which today is wondrously beautiful, but tomorrow has vanished Therefore pray in such a way that your prayer, your surrender to God, may become like a road sign. That way, your witness will not only have value for yourselves, but for all eternity. Thank you for having responded to my call. The very fact is, and the truth is, our life is fleeting like a flower. We're going to be here and all of us meet the same end. I say grab hold of Jesus, embrace Mary and her messages, seek them out, listen to them, fill yourselves with light, and then you'll not fear anything. Jesus is the light, seek him, read him, ingest him, receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity. Meditate, him on, meditate on him and your fears will dissipate. Mary asks us to pray. What do you do if you begin to feel the waves of fear crashing upon your head? Pick up a rosary, begin to pray it. Pray the divine mercy. I find myself singing divine mercy all the time because when I'm working, I'm alone and I can sing out loud and I sing divine mercy to myself. Saint Louis de Montfort in his true devotion says, there where the guidance of Mary is, neither evil spirits with his delusion nor the heretics can ever come. The Holy Spirit has formed Jesus Christ except by Mary. Neither does he form the members of our Lord's mystical body except by her. And through her does he dispose his favors and gifts. My friends, once again, how can we not be incredibly grateful like those recipients of those organs that we are Catholic? We have a hero like no other who promises us eternal life. We have a reminder every Mass we have his words in scripture, have his body and blood, the Eucharist, and we have his mother all over the world. She is reminding us of what he told us. Listen to this in context of scripture. Jesus said, I must go, but the Holy Spirit, he will come and he will remind you of all that I have told you. And what is Mary doing? Reminding us of all that he has told us. So doesn't that illuminate your mind to the context that she is in the Holy Spirit? She'll be here in relentless pursuit of all of you and me. And one cannot help the times must be dire for her to be here this long. This is unprecedented in history. Many believe we're in the end times. The fact is this may be true, but only the Father knows that. And whatever the times we are being reminded over and over again by Mary 
She wants us to seek God, live Him, breathe Him, and surrender to Him. All of our good comes from Him. The Revel- she's the lady of Genesis 3.15 to the lady of Revelation in chapter 12. Dear children, today again I am calling you to prayer and to complete surrender to God. You know that I love you and am coming here out of love so I could show you the path to peace and salvation for your souls. I want you to obey me and not permit Satan to seduce you. Dear children, Satan is very strong, and therefore I ask you to dedicate your prayers to me so that those who are under his influence can be saved. Give witness by your life. Sacrifice your lives for the salvation of the world. I am with you, and I am grateful to you. But in heaven you shall receive the Father's reward, which he has promised to you. Therefore, little children, do not be afraid. If you pray, Satan cannot injure you even a little bit, because you are God's children, and he is watching over you. Pray, and let the rosary always be on your hands as a sign to Satan that you belong to me. Thank you for responding to my call. My friends, it's very clear. Very clear to Father Neil, very clear to me, and I hope it's clear to you. We are in an intense spiritual warfare right now. Our Lady is giving us the ingredients that we need for our protection, our families, and we have to care. It's a matter of making a decision. Do we care enough to want those ingredients? My friends, we're in a time, we see the face of this warfare everywhere. We see it visibly in the church. The Holy Father, just recently last year, had to ask forgiveness for its sins. Many despise the church today. Many are losing faith. In my hometown alone, as every year I go back to my hometown in Massachusetts, four of the biggest churches were closed. Those churches used to be full when I was a boy. It is obvious The church needs a new Pentecost. The world needs a new Pentecost. And Pope Benedict XVI last year on the Feast of Fatima said, there will be no Pentecost without Mary. It's important to comprehend the meaning of this word surrender. And following closely the messages in Holy Scripture, one can begin to clearly see the spiritual battle and comprehend why God would send Mary here so long. Many are not aware, however. Many in our faith are not aware. Many do not want to acknowledge this. So what forces, what forces create that kind of thinking? And we have no way of defeating that force on our own. We're not strong enough to defeat that force. I recognize that. That's why I need her so much. That's why I need the rosary. I need all of the messages that she is telling me I need. I have to ask Jesus every day, please help me. You know, there's so much crap that comes upon our shoulders every day, on our lives, on our heads. You can't beat that alone. Surrender it. Just say, Jesus, I surrender it to you. Whatever the misery, whatever the struggle... Whatever it is, I surrender my family, I surrender my kids, I surrender my life, I surrender all of this that we're doing here. For 
disciples of the living God who reigns in heaven. I call on my children, the true faithful, those who have given themselves to me so that I may lead them to my divine Son, those who I carry in my arms, those who have lived according to my spirit. Finally, I call upon the apostles of the last days, 
the faithful disciples of Jesus Christ who have lived in scorn for the world and for themselves. It is time they came out and filled the world with light. Go and reveal yourselves as my cherished children. I am at your side and within you, provided that your faith is the light which shines upon you in these unhappy days. May your zeal make you hunger for the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ. Fight, children of light, you the few who can see. For now is the time, and so, my children, you will pass this on to all my people. I want to leave you with, uh, I thought, a pretty profound message from St. Therese. I've always noticed that all hell seems to let loose against someone who has just finished a retreat. The demons unite to make us fall, and soon we take the first steps as to discourage us. In fact, once we fall, we say, how can I keep my resolutions? I've fallen so soon. If we allow ourselves to think like this, the devils have won. So each time they are successful, you must get up again without surprise and humbly say to Jesus, they may have knocked me down, but I'm not beaten. Here I am, standing again and ready to go on fighting for love of you. Then Jesus will be loved by your goodwill and will himself be your strength. I want to leave you with a personal message I received on July 15, 2010. I desire to present a splendid bouquet of flowers to my mother with the gathering of the witnesses. Each witness, one of the many petals making up each individual flower, will be held tightly together by the bonds of love for me and my mother. These flowers will diffuse an aroma of prayer, holiness, and conversion that will attract many. Then you shall witness my power in their conversions. This bouquet I shall present to my mother over and over again as the witnesses gather in the mission. I will this out of pure love for my mother in addition to the many graces and merits I bestow on her. God bless you all. This has been a privilege to stand here and profess my faith.